that has not worked. I can tell you down for free. I'll be 47 years later this month. And for as far as I can remember, it is only curses. People reign on Nepal. He no go better for Nepal. Now that they've increased tariff, oh, courses have resumed. That's why when Fashola got there, he said, he said, there is, he said this place is jinxed. This place is jinxed. I'm a national fan. We're on top of the league. And the elephant is not coming down this time. Glory to God. But over the years, the biggest problem we have had are our fans. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! For the first time, I'm hearing positive things. Now, it is easier to be positive when things are working. They don't need you to speak when things are working. When you need to speak is when things are not working. When the storms of life comes against you, you will rise up and say, peace, be still. The drink that Jesus drank became in a well that gave him a mouth. Good evening, welcome to The Awakening, day six, the evening session. How's everybody doing? I hope you've had an amazing week, an amazing day. It has been, wow, quite the journey on The Awakening, right from day one up until now, and it is about to get hotter. I hope you're ready because God, God is not even close to being done with us. There is such a lot that is still in store for each and every one of us. So I hope that you're ready to receive from God today. Make sure you don't allow any distractions. Make sure that you are ready and you are receptive. Make sure that you are coming with an, accept, uh, with an expectation. And I guarantee you, because God has said in his word that he will meet the expectations of the children. The Bible says that the expectation will not be short. Make sure that you are coming to God with your expectation today. And as you come with that expectation, God himself will meet you at the point of your need. So yes, as we've been looking at um, in the awakening, you know, rivers of living water, it has been quite, quite the journey, as I said. You know, quite a lot has been said, quite a lot has been taught. And I think one of the key things that, you know, has come from this is the reminder that, um, as the Bible says, it says, out of my belly flow rivers of living water. There are rivers of living water within us. You know, and we often sit, read that Bible verse. I know I've read that Bible verse a lot of times, and sometimes you just read it like rote, and you just read it and just move on. But there's a lot that is in that Bible verse that we need to unpack. There is a lot that you need to understand because it is the understanding of that that brings light. Remember, the awakening, the understanding of God's word is what brings light to us, what brings illumination. And it's that light that allows you to be able to carry out whatever it is God has placed in your hand. And so as has been said all through the conference, you know, that the rivers flow within us. But for, for us to tap those rivers, we must have that relationship. We must have that communion with God because the ultimate source of the rivers within us is God. So without having, having that you know, relationship, that communion with God, then we will not be connected to the ultimate source. The river flows from God. 
it flows into us and like apostle arome um i believe it was apostle arome was saying that when the river goes when he read genesis you know and he talks about the river in the garden of eden when the river flew uh, flowed out to P uh, pishon as he pronounced it went around the entire land of pishon and the river as it was going around it was eroding eroding until it brought forth the gold of the land and the bible says the gold was good and that is the same thing with the river that flows from within us when it goes out when we are when we are when we are connected to the source and the rivers flow what it does is that it goes into our lives and it begins to remove everything that is hiding what God has placed in us. It begins to remove everything that is in us that is not meant to be of us. And as those things are removed, then the glory is revealed. The, the healing is revealed. Everything that we are looking for is revealed. So rather than going out there and you're searching for the next church and searching for, no, spend time with God draw from God and then that river as it flows will reveal to you all that you need from God remember seek first what the kingdom of God and his righteousness and then every other thing you need will be added unto you I'm not going to keep you much longer service has started so we're going to head into the main auditorium so that we can join in with the service please make sure as I said you are not distracted this is a fantastic time for you to share the link with your friends with your family anybody around so they can join in and partake and if you're in Abuja you can still run on down and meet us for service just put it in purple place it'll bring you straight here have a blessed time in service my name is Ngozi Otayemi and I'll see you towards the end of service let's head in 98 from verse 1 to 6 Genesis 98 from verse 1 to 6 Are we there? Okay. So let's read. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Please, can we chorus it together? Please. Let's take, let's take it again. Oh, sing to the, to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gained him the victory. The Lord has made known his salvation his righteousness he has revealed in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his mercy and his faithfulness to the house of Holy Hill. Amen. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation. Shout joyfully to the Lord, O ye Holy Hill. You did not get that part. You are meant to shout. We are taught how to shout in the morning. It says, Shout joyfully to the Lord, O the earth. He so said, break forth in songs, rejoice, and sing praises. Sing to the Lord with a harp, with a harp and the sound of a psalm, with trumpets and the sound of a horn. Shout joyfully before the Lord, the King. Can you give the Lord some shout of victory? He says, shout joyfully, shout joyfully. Shout joyfully before the Lord, our King. Begin to give him thanks this evening. Begin to give him praise. Say, Father, I come tonight with thanksgiving. I come joyfully with thanksgiving into your presence this evening. I give you the praise for that which you're already doing in my life, for that which you've done, that which you are doing, and for that which you will yet do in my life as a person. Are you giving God thanks this evening? Lord, I thank you. Thank you for how you started with me in this conference, for how you started with us in this conference. From day one to day two, day three, day four, day five, and it's the six. Father, thank you for your word that has come. Thank you for your word of, 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 of healings. Thank you for the miraculous. Thank you for the release of prophecies over our lives. Thank you for the activation of spiritual gifts. Thank you for visitations and breakthroughs and open doors. Thank you for the testimonies, oh God. We give you the praise. Lord, we give you the praise. If you know that God has started something in your life, just lift up your two hands and say, Father, I am grateful. Lord, I am grateful. I am grateful for that which you started doing in my life by this conference. In this conference. Lord, I worship you. Be thou exalted. Be thou exalted. Thank you for all the speakers that you have brought to address us. 
to bring us. Thank you, O oh Lord, for alignment in the spirit. Thank you for your word that has come just as we needed it. Thank you for precision and accuracy in the delivery of the word. Lord, we do not take it for granted. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. Thank you because after this conference, we are not remaining the same. We give you the praise in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the various impartations that have happened in our lives. Thank you, O oh God. Thank you, O oh Lord. Thank you for the change of levels. Thank you for the change of spiritual levels. We are no longer the same again. We bless your holy name. Be thou exalted, O oh God. Be thou exalted. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. And so we start praying now. We, we have just two prayer points. The first one will be taken from Psalms 119. Verse 105 and verse 130. Psalms 119, verse 105 and verse 130. Let's read together. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Verse 130. The entrance of your words gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. We're going to be praying this evening and say, In the name of Jesus, I open my heart to receive light, understanding, and direction from your word. I open up my heart to receive light, understanding, and direction from your word. Turn that to prayer now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we open our hearts again tonight. Oh, we are not tired of drawing from you tonight. We come again to draw. We come again to draw light from your word. We come again to draw understanding and knowledge, revelation from your word. We come to draw direction again this night. And so, Lord, we open our hearts. We open our hearts. Our hearts are open. Our hearts are open. I open my heart to receive light tonight. I op open my heart to receive more light more understanding more revelation more direction from your word from more illumination from your word i open up my heart in the name of jesus to draw from the wells of salvation in the name of jesus our hearts are open tonight. Our hearts are open tonight. My heart is open tonight. Are you praying tonight? Are you praying? Leka bada gada bragada bada eshanda gadiza brakata gada. Our hearts are open to experience you in a dimension that we've never experienced you before tonight. In the name of Jesus, la brakata da bada bada gada bada. We receive light tonight as our, our hearts are open to receive light. We draw light in the name of Jesus. We draw understanding from your word. We draw revelation from your word. We draw knowledge. We draw direction in the name of Jesus from your word tonight. I will not be distracted tonight. My heart is open. And I focus on you tonight to receive from you as I deliberately open up my heart. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We willingly open up our hearts to receive more. To receive more of you tonight. In the name of Jesus. We'll not just rejoice by the coming forth of the war, but the war will enter our hearts. The war will enter our hearts. The war will transform us. The war will grant us light. The war will grant us understanding and direction. 
by the word we shall bear fruit in the name of Jesus the word will bear fruits from our hearts in the name of Jesus we allow the seed of the word to be deeply rooted in our hearts and it will bear fruits outward in the name of Jesus in Jesus name we are praying you know like Pastor John Jay was telling us in the morning you know we're always excited when the word is coming you say preach it preacher you are just excited and many a times in fact as you are leaving the, the, the church building the word is, is nowhere it's nowhere even it's like we leave the word in the church and we just leave and we are the same. Say, God forbid. I want you to hold hands with someone. Just intercede for that person. That his heart is open to receive tonight. I agree with my brother. Your heart, you will not be distracted. There are so, much, so many distractions. Distractions of doubt, of unbelief and all of that. So many distractions. Pray for that brother. Pray for that sister. He will not be distracted. She will not be distracted. His heart, her heart, our hearts are open tonight. Let's pray for ourselves. Our hearts are open to receive tonight. Our hearts are open to receive tonight. We, we are bearing fruit by the word. But people will see us two, three months from now and they will say, Ah, of a truth, the awakening conference made a difference in your life. This meeting will be a reference point in our lives, in our various lives. We'll look back in the next one week, in the next two weeks, the next one month, two months, three months, and on. And we'll say, ah, I can still, you know, feel the impact of that program in my life. The things I learned, I, 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 I'm, still, I'm still trying to apply them in my life. Begin to pray. I will not be distracted. I will not be distracted. Ah, the word is rooted. The word is deeply rooted in my heart tonight. In the name of Jesus. I begin to know what to do by supernatural direction. As I allow the word, as I allow the word to take root in my heart, I have direction by the word. I know what to do by the word. I am guided by the word. I am led forth by the word. No more confusion because the word is taking root in my heart. The word is taking root in my heart. No more distraction. No more confusion. I know what to do in the various aspects of my life, in my marriage, in my finances, in my business, in my relationships. I know what to do. The world is working wonders. The world is working wonders in me. I am awakened to, my, to, to purpose by the world. I am awakened. I am awakened by the world. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Secondly, we are reading from Proverbs chapter 4, verse 10 and 11. Proverbs 4, verse 10 and 11. Please, let's read together. Hear, my son, and receive my saints, and the years of your life will be many. I have taught you in the way of wisdom. I have led you in right path. By the message of God, we are being taught in the way of wisdom in this conference. And God is leading us in the right path. We're going to pray. Say, Father, grant me the wisdom to run with and apply all that we have been taught in this conference. Open your mind and begin to pray. That God will grant you grace, wisdom to run with and apply. We run with and we apply all that we have been taught. He say, hear my son and receive my sins. And the years of your life will be many. If we can receive the saints that have come forth by reason of this conference, it will preserve our life for so many years. He said, I have taught you in the way of wisdom. We've been taught in the way of wisdom and say, I have led you in the right path. Begin to pray and say, Father, grant me wisdom. Father, grant me wisdom. Father, grant me wisdom to run with and to apply everything that I've been taught in this conference. All that we have been taught, all that we are yet to be taught, Lord, I don't just want to be a hearer only. The book of James, he said, as a hearer, you are just deceiving yourselves. God forbid. I don't want to be deceiving myself. Coming every day from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Friday, Saturday, and tomorrow, and my life is still the same. So, Lord God, help me. Lord, help me. Grant me grace. Grant me the wisdom to run with and to apply in my life everything that I'm being taught. 
in this conference in the name of Jesus. Rada basha kata bada gada bragada bada. Ekatanda bradi shara bada sapatia. Ekapala bada gada bragada bada bada. I will receive grace to be doers of your word. Rada basha kata nda bada bada. Ekapada basha rata kada bada. Epraladisha bakata namante. Epraladisha tabagada bada. Epranasha lada gisa bakata. Eprada bada bada gada bada. Gada bada, epra la brada basha kata bada, ekatanda bara de bashila batiza, ekatanda brakata rada bada bada, epra la da basha rada bada gada. We receive grace to do your word. We receive wisdom to do your word. We receive grace to run with that which you've spoken of our lives in this conference. In the name of Jesus, Rataka Basha Pala Bada 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 Bada, the grace to do, the grace to do, the grace to be obedient, the grace for obedience to your counsel, to the words of wisdom, to the words of prophecies that have gone forth by reason of this conference. We receive tonight in the name of Jesus, Rataka Pada Bada 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 Bada, Epra Rada Basha Kata Bada Bada. Ebra libra kata da bada gada grace for obedience grace for obedience le pradam basha katanda e katanda bagadiza e kaparada basha tabada e la baradi kamanda brakata regede gede predisha da gada le prarada basha kata daba le prada bada bagada bada pray for grace for obedience obedience Obedience. Libra kata da bada gada bada. Ebra rada basha kata da bada. God will be giving you specific instructions. La prada bara bada gada. Every specific instructions, Lord, that you have given to us by reason of this conference, we receive grace to obey. We receive grace to run with those words. We receive grace to continue in those words. We receive grace to apply those words to obey. Libra kata barada bada. Even when it's not convenient, Lord, we choose to obey you. We choose to obey your word. Ekapala banda barada bada bada. Ekabasha rada gada bada. Whatever task you'll be telling us to embark on after this conference, we receive grace to embark on such task in the name of Jesus. Rata kapara bila batanante. Ekabarada bada bada gada bada bada. Prarada basha kata da bada e karanda badisha li prada basha kata da bada Father we give you praise Lord we give you praise begin to thank God for grace thank Him for grace grace for obedience grace to run with the word Lord we thank you for grace. Thank you for your grace that is being made available. Because you are the God that walketh in us both to will and to do of your good pleasure. We give you all the praise. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Let's take our declaration. Let's take our declaration. You may have to say it after me. In the name of Jesus, I declare that God's word comes to me today. In full and supernatural measures, the word purifies, cleanses, sanctifies, and delivers to me my inheritance in Christ Jesus. Tonight, I submit my mind and faculties to the full influence of the Holy Spirit, who teaches me and brings me to all truth. I receive unction from the Holy One as God's word comes forth. My mind is filled with the illumination of scriptures. And I understand the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Today, I receive a sound mind. And I assess the intelligence of the spirit concerning the season that has come upon the earth. As I wait upon the Lord during this conference, my strength is renewed. And he enlightens the eyes of my understanding. 
by the spirit of wisdom and revelation. I declare by faith that in seeing I will see, in hearing I will hear, and with my heart I have full understanding. In Jesus' mighty name. Put your hands together as we celebrate the Lord. church so um, we're going to be doing um, what I call bedroom worship so you know when you're in the bedroom and then a lot of songs just keep flowing and it's like the inspiration is the most that's the kind of worship we're going to be doing tonight it's one of the strongest worships ever because it's unrestricted it's unscripted and it's straight from the heart so I would love you to open your hearts this night as we lift up our voice and worship God. From the depths of your heart, just think of the things that God has done for you. There are so many, so many, so many, so many. The other day I was sharing a testimony and it struck me that that was not the only time God has done something for me. He does a lot for me on a daily basis, on a daily basis. Just relax and think just relax and think there's a lot you would think of to worship this God for and even if you can't find anything to worship for because of the fact that your father loves you and he has given you mercy that's enough to worship him for hallelujah you deserve a glory and the honor so we leave the voice to worship as we bless your holy name she'll deserve a glory and the honor as how we leave the hands to worship as we bless your holy name you are great you do miracles, oh great. There is no good else like you. There is no else like you. You are great. You do miracles, oh. Nobody else like you. So there's this song I remember right now. It's very simple. It says, Down at your feet, oh Lord. Ah, He's the most high bliss in your presence, Lord. I seek your face. I seek your Come on, let's sing it together, say There is no and no greater honor hey, than to bow and I will kneel before you. Hey. Say I'm embraced by all men. Oh Lord, I live to worship. 
up. You can sing with me now. Sing, there is no higher call and no greater that holds my life ah. is that your testimony tonight yeah you are the pillar you've been there for me all through my life Jehovah yes you are the pillar that holds my life you are the that holds my life. The next song says, Your name is higher than every other name. Your name is Jesus. Hey, your name is Lord. Your of words trying to describe Elohim Elion Alashelohim Your greatness is all I see There is nothing you cannot do There's no mouthing you cannot do. If you have said it do it. You have a track record of giving your You're not about to stop doing it now. Hey, so you are good, you are kind, you are part of this. Lost of what? Joy to this world. Elohim, Elion, Hallelujah. There is nothing you cannot do. There's no mountain you cannot move. If you have said it, then you will do it. Hey, you have a track record of keeping your your not about to stop doing it. No, hey, all our own All over my Hey, all over my Hey, she am I. She was, she was, she you are, you are, you are, you are. Jesus, she was, 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 she was
of the Lord is upon He is anointing He's empowering For wisdom of the Lord is with Him And He's calling me To the heavenly To be seated in heavenly place It's just like heaven just like heaven order to be walking in his favor and grace it's just like heaven ah oh, just like heaven order to be seated in heavenly places it is just like heaven just like heaven order to be walking in his favor and grace it is just like I see the glory. It is like lift your voice and say, it's Titan. See the glory. Just like heaven. Something's moving. See the way just a sunny around. Yeah. See it. See it. See it. Hey. There is lightning and thunder. Miracles and wonders. The sound of many waters. Yeah. Sound of many waters. Sound of many Miracles. Yeah. 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 I still got joy in chaos. I've got peace that makes no sense when everything around me is shaken. I know I'm not held by my own strength. I put my faith in Jesus. Is the rock on which I stand? Is faithful to every every season. Jesus, so I won't give up. He won't. He won't. He won't. He won't. He won't. He won't. Your name, your name, your name, oh, your name, oh, ah, ah, oh night. From the rising of the sun to the setting out of the same, your name is to be alone. Hey, ha, ha. Let's keep life to it from the rising. Oh! 
the evil Show me and I'll breed You're the reason I live You're my strong time of Jesus You're the one that we run to Hey, from the rising up From the rising up To the sun To the You're the only wise king. You're the only wise king. You're the only wise God. You're the air that I breathe. You're the source of my strength. You're the reason I live. You're the bread that I hear. You're my master. You're my savior. You're my redeemer. redeemer. Hey, oh. In our lungs, so we pour out our praise, pour out our praise is your bread. In our lungs, so we pour out our praise to you only. Very simple, it's your bread. In our lungs, so we pour out our praise, pour out our praise is your bread. In our lungs. So we pour. Hey, yes, the world will bow down and say you are God. Every man, we will bow down and say you are King. Ah, so let's start right now. Hey. Why should we praise? We'll keep praise you now. We'll praise you in victory. You are king of glory. Feel this place. We just want to be with you. We just want to be with you. Lift your voice. King of glory. King of glory. Feel this blessing. We just want to be with you. Yeah. Hey. Hi, 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 hi. Say. So we'll sing hallelujah till you come again. That's what we dedicate our lives to do, eh? and we'll then sing in your praises. See you come again. We'll sing hallelujah. See you come again. Come on, yeah, just the drums alone. Just the drums alone. Hey, listen. We release the sound of the heavens, the sound of the earth. Shekinah is here. I release the sound of the heavens, the sound of the earth. His glory. Join me, say, I release hey, the sound of the earth. His glory is, we cry, holy, 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 yeah, His glory is here. 
Worship him, worship him some more. Worship him in the spirit, sing a song, your own song, bring your own song to him tonight. For his glory is here. Kanemon to le pare de kinamanta yalabaha. Le borodo se kamaneno sinananina manda le bara de gabon da rabadia. Ela di kamatele baoro taboro de gabara getesiada. El galete kenemento robodo ko tabaliada yada. Radicabo, so tele in an anato la paradozo. La queda do shakapale and the Indeed, the glory of God is here. I was going to be staring the waters again tonight. Hallelujah. If, if I were you, I would just shut my eyes and just bask in this presence. Just it be you and God. Let it be you and God. And let it flow from within you. Enjoy the atmosphere. Makoto la paradiasha. Enjoy his presence here. His glory is here. Let control la paha. And just commune with your father. Oh, Kapale de Setele Gaboshata. Let your spirits worship your maker tonight. Elikato Setalia in tongues worship him. Eragato Selepara Gatina Manta. Esegaleboshata. Ragato Setalia. Speak that language of the spirit. Elikoto Parande Gaboshia. Eragato Roba Kasoroba de Gatevarade. La Mandoro Poko Tebeanda Bakata. Elago Shakatalia. This is how we prepare for the move of. Of the spirit and this is how we get ready to receive his word and for we are of the circumcision who worship him in the spirit and have no confidence in the flesh Gato paragate gamanda ayate kamate paragati gaba ada pon taboruate esoko porade ekata ya tepene ne sota ela taboroko poroko tepe ya taboruate esale ke poroko pasekete araketoja ela ke poroko posekata ele poroko sosia as you prepare your spirits for tonight I want you to reflect on all that you have received this week araketo sota la. Take about the anointing that is not walking you. Le kelege bo shakata. Era koso paradoseka. Le boro kosiha. Regetosam. As you pray, meditate on the power of God that is at work in you now. That which you have received. Era getosata. The rivers going forth from you to the ends of the earth, bringing deliverance, bringing salvation. Ele kebo sata. That river that has become the solution that men seek. You carry this rivers to your home, to your marriage, and you turn things around for good. You take it to your workplace and you are changing the narrative. You carry this river into men's sin and you are the one inventing new things, bringing solutions to those deadly diseases. You are the one downloading from heaven because the rivers are flowing. It is a constant flow. No more dryness. No more dryness. We have come into the season of the overflow. The season of the overflow. Would you just allow that well up in your spirit? For out of me is flowing rivers, rivers, rivers. The rivers are flowing from Holy Hill Church into different sectors. From this mountain into different sectors, into different mountains of influence. 
Can you just see yourself carrying the rivers everywhere? You show up in the place. It's Jesus showing up. It's such an invitation we have received. I want you to steer these waters, steer the waters. You do that with your mouth, praying in tongues. Can you see yourself bringing forth the solutions? Never confuse the gain. For the rivers within me, they are flowing out. Imparting men, imparting my community, imparting nations. Turning men into righteousness. Bringing deliverance, healing. Oh, para de que se te. El gato shatalama. El gato sakata. El gato lo barana na masha. El na 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 masakate. El ruakato. El gabosia. We see the gifts that have been imparted. El gato lava. El gato shakadia. We see the gifts that have been imparted at this conference. El gato ruakate. El gaboro dosia. That we just come up. Upon us as a people that will just come upon us as a ministry. A glad of Shetamande, a regato Sakata, a legate of Shakata, a legaporo de Bacosa, a Sulo Barade, a legate of Shakata, a late the Cabaradino, a regatita Susabo, a legate of Shakata, a Yanana Maso Cotelia, in an anaso Tolava, a regatilla Barade Gagatosha, a legato Sote. La barraca to la baragadosa, e que derrubo cobadia, Latina tashikate, e ne nunda barogoto, e le gato secate, e le gato shalabahadia, e na 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 mosokote, e le gato sa, e le gato shakata, e le gato sokata, out of this house, we go for the mighty army, marica to la baragadosha, e le gato secata, we have camped with the Lord, we have stayed with the word, maragati Sakata, Elika Barado Susia, see us mounting as eagles, Elika Barra de Cosciata, Eregatica de la Bosha, carrying this light everywhere, Erega Shota la Basha, Ele Ponta la Capa, Ele Bosha Kinanda, we illuminate our word for Jesus, Ika Manto Robadia, Elega Sotem, a city set upon the hill that cannot be hidden, a city set upon the hill that cannot be hidden, a city set upon the hill that Cannot be hidden. Oh, Kalabara geto sukopa. Eden ene ene moshakata. Ele geto shatara bande. Ele geto rani masukopa. Endo to lakapa. Ele gebo shasita. Even the little one amongst us has become a mighty nation. Ele gete na na moshakate. Ele geto sula bara gete sekete. Eno to lo bara gatina. Rade shekapo. Arakido sekata. Ele no sukota. And tonight, Lord, we are ready. We are ready for more. We are ready for more. We are not tired. We are ready for more. We want more. Much more than you did on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and even in the morning. Oh, we are ready for you. Our hearts are ready. Matola ba secretaria. Arigatola gaborado secretar. All across this place and everywhere where people are connected. Eragatu sakatali badaha. We thank you for your presence is made manifest. Your glory is revealed. There is an overflow. Thank you, precious Father. Would you just lift your hands with me as we thank him for all that he said to do tonight. Much more than we have seen at this conference. We have seen God show himself mightily. Lord, we bless you. We give you all the glory. For indeed we will change and we will keep changing. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Let's put our hands together.
as we welcome God's own servants, Minister Neon. Let's let's put our hands. Let's put our hands together until he gets here. Are we clapping? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is so good. God is so good. It's such a blessing to be here today. I count it a great privilege and honor. Thank you, Pison. Thank you for this opportunity. I love you dearly. And I love Holy Hill. Holy Hill, can we celebrate Jesus? I mean, I thought I came to Holy Hill. Am I somewhere else? I know we know how to praise God better in this place. At least I've been here before. Is it because of the traffic or something or today was work? Can we celebrate God more even? Can we celebrate more? Now, if you know that God has been good to you, if you know God is the reason why you are standing, if you know God is the reason why you can breathe, if you know is the reason why you are here January, February, March, and you have confidence that you will see April, May, June, July, August, September, until the very end of the year, I want you to, with a heart of gratitude, celebrate Jesus in this house. And now, can you lift your hands? Just lift your hands. Can you lift up your hands and just begin to speak in other tongues? Speak in the language of, of the believer. Can you speak in other tongues? Speak it out loud. Do not be ashamed to talk to your father. Do not be ashamed to raise a cry to heaven. Do not be ashamed to raise a cry to heaven. We are standing yes. on holy ground, and I know that there are angels all around. Let us praise Jesus now. Are we ready to do that? And we are standing in your presence on holy ground. Only here can you worship this evening, and we are standing on holy ground, and I know that they are angels. Let us pray. Let us pray. Jesus now. That's the only person we've come to praise this evening. We are standing in His presence. And holy ground, we're standing on holy ground. We're standing on holy ground. When nothing else matters, when nothing makes sense, when nothing else makes sense at all, we're standing on holy ground. Only Jesus makes sense now. Only Jesus matters now. We're standing on holy ground. You have captured my heart, consumed my heart with your love. 
And you have captured my heart, consumed my heart with your love. The only thing I think of is your love. Lord, you have captured my heart, consumed my heart with your love. Do I have people whose heart has been captured by Jesus in this place? Now can we let it out this evening? You have captured my heart, consumed my heart with your love. I need you to sing it out this evening with your hands lifted. You have captured, you have captured my consumed. Have you? You have captured. You have captured. You have captured, you have captured my heart. Has he captured your heart this evening? If it's a reason why you came here, you will join us. You have captured, you have captured. Hey, my consume, my heart. Hey, 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 Without the music, without the music, sing you have got you. You need to let your lips sing with your heart this evening. Sing you have captured. Now that we have one voice in this place, said it for us, say it for Jesus. That's more than enough for that sickness. I don't care what the doctor says, all I know is that name works. It for us, say Jesus. Jesus, that's more than enough. When I think of what you've done, when I think of how you delivered me, if all I say, Jesus, Jesus, I tell you, God, yeah, yeah. you're bigger than the biggest, stronger than the strongest. If all I say, if all I say, Not with your hands lifted this evening. Can you join me as I hear the spirit? Oh, go, Hallelujah. To the Lamb. To the Lamb. Oh, go, go. Ekaya de de kabela kabaliya de kapa. To the Lamb. To the Lamb. Oh, go. Ale, 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 ale. To the one who rise. To the one who never sleep nor slumber because of you. Oh, go. Ale, ale, ale. Ale, 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 ale. To the Lamb. One more time without the music. Oh, go. Can I get worshippers excited in this place this evening? You want to be excited because those that worship must worship from the place of the spirit. You want to be excited and worship. Knowing fully well what the Father has done for you. Now it's your time to give him all the glory. It's your time to give him all the praise. Oh, go! Ale, 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 ale. To the name. To the name of rain. Oh, go. Ale, 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 ale. To the name. Oh, to the name. 
Yes, what I love most. We will stop. We will stop forever and ever. Forever and ever. I will stop praising you. My generation will stop loving you. For I, Kayada Dabakalia. For I, say we will stop praising. We will stop loving. Forever and ever. Forever and ever. I will go crazy for Jesus. I will go crazy for Jesus. It doesn't matter what any man says. This is my allegiance. This is my allegiance. Say we will stop praising. We will stop loving. Forever and ever. Come on, you want to be excited in the house of God. Because in his presence is fullness of joy. We will stop loving. Forever. Forever and ever. I, this guy God, another one, no, no. Jay, I'm such a lover. This guy God, another one, no, no. Now can you tell me? Said another one, no day. Another one, no day. One, no day. I'm such a lover, I don't wanna know. Another one, no day. Hey, 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 hey. Another one, no day. Another one, no day. Another one, no day. One, no day. Said I will call upon the Lord. I will call upon Yeshua. <laughs> and who is worthy to be praised? Over here. Who is worthy to be praised? Are you ready? And so shall the Lord. Blessed be the Lord. Let the rock of my salvation be exalted. The Lord, be Let the rock of my salvation be exalted. Let the rock of my salvation be exalted. Let the rock of my salvation be exalted. If all the day, oh, 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 shit, oh, if all the day, oh, 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 if all the day, if all the day, oh, 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 light has come, darkness disappears, oh, 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 if all the day, Bible said that they brought light out of darkness. If there's anything God is doing in this season, He's doing it through your situation. He's not doing it out of your situation because He can bring light out of darkness. And so, in that situation you are in, God can bring success out of failure, He can bring childbirth out of barrenness. There's nothing that God can do. There's nothing that God cannot do. It doesn't matter what the situation is. As long as you have a spot, a posture that I represent light, I carry God in my DNA. If God can turn water to wine, my situation is too small for God. Now, are you ready to worship this understanding? Hey, if all a day, light has come. Darkness disappears. He falls down. He falls down. He falls down. He falls down. 
Come on, you have 30 seconds. Just lift your voice in the room. You have 30 seconds to lift your voice to the Father. You have 30 seconds. Do not play with this moment. It doesn't take God 365 days to change your life. All it takes is a moment. One moment with the King is more than enough. It can be this very moment. It can be this very moment. Don't feel too big about this moment. More than my mouth can testify. More than this mind can comprehend. See, I've seen the wonders of your grace. I'm so sure that this is not. Are you here and you're giving up already? I'm so sure that this is not the end. When I look at the way the business is going, I'm so sure that this is not the end. I may be struggling with some addiction for now, but I'm so sure that this is not the end. It may not make sense at the moment, but I'm so sure that this is not the end. Oh, 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 oh. If God has truly found you worthy, I can see, I can tell, and I know. The ogress of my days, I will sing you. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, hey. see how far you brought me. Hey, hey. I'm so glad you found me worthy, cause I can see. I can tell, and I know it's your All my days, I will see your Yes, I move See how far you brought a man like me The enemy thought he had me I'm so glad you found me well Stay there, stay there Yes, I Thank you for not giving up on me. When I look about my life, I know it's all by your grace. I know it's all by your grace. Yes, I obey. See how far you brought me. When I think of all you've done for me, Jesus, my heart, my heart gladdens me. My heart glad is me, yes, I move. See how far you brought me. Thank you for not giving up on me. I'm so glad, I'm so glad. I can see. If there's anything the father enjoys is a heart of gratitude he healed ten lepers only one came back and that one was recorded in the Bible every time you present yourself back to see there's every tendency that when he blesses you you will forget that's why you must be intentional with gratitude I pity the man that values his outfit 
his suit and his shoes more than giving gratitude to the father I pity the man that brings a heart that is full of confusion more than giving gratitude to the father I'm a product of the goodness of God I'm a product of God's grace and mercy I will not be standing here if not for grace see how far grace has brought me that's why everywhere I go I will keep singing hey, 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 hey. Thank you for not giving me to the enemies. Hey, 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 I'm so glad you found me worthy. Cause I can't see. I can't tell. And I know. I will sing your Sarah, 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 come and sing. Before I leave you, who am I that the highest will welcome me? I was a lost but he brought me, oh, his love for me. Yes, his love for me, whom the sword said, oh, his I'm a child of God. Yes, sir. Can I get a witness? That in my father's house, that's a place. I'm a child. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, can we take it on this? Said I am chosen. Not forsaken, I am who you say I am, and you are for me, not again. I am who you say I am, I am chosen, I am who you say I am, you are for me. Before we leave, before we leave. Cause Christ is my firm foundation And it's not When everything around me changes And I That I feel my He's never let me down And it's my fault for So why would, so why would yes, 
Pastor Paul, I love him. He won. Has he failed before? He won. He will start now. He will fail. I yes, my friend, one more. Cause I still got joy in the game. And I will help this time. Makes no sense. And I will be falling out. I'm going out. And I will be my life. I will my life. You never let me down. Everybody for truth. all over this place this evening. Lift up your hands. There is so much joy in the atmosphere. The hand of God is so strong in this place. Lift up your hands like a funnel and receive grace and mercy and a garment, change of garment, change of oil. Lift up your hands. Thank you, mighty God. Blessed be your name. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Glory to God. Put your hands together once again tonight. Let's celebrate the gift of God, Leon Adejo. Let's celebrate. Let's celebrate some more. Amen. You may be seated. So much energy. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And it's so beautiful that um, we are going to have him tomorrow. Everyone we're having tonight will have tomorrow. And that's one of the things I love about awakening. Um, we have the opportunity of the second time in the same conference. You know, I don't know how possible you does it where you allow people to stay for three nights. I wish I can do the same too. Three nights. Just because when you allow a, a minister, minister three nights or three times in a conference, it's just that we don't have morning sessions. If there was a morning session, maybe somebody would do it in the night and come in the morning, then do it in the night and leave to have a more. So we are honored and we have we have two men of God that I respect a lot and and when when I had the opportunity when it was time for me to go back to school I I had the option of going to Unilag or Ife and so a friend came to visit me from Ife and he came to convince me that I should come to Ife instead of going to Unilag. So my dad too was of the opinion that 
I should go to IFA instead of Unilag. So, and I was living in VI in 1004 estate. So most of the Unilag students that were in my estate, I didn't, they, were not, they didn't look like they were serious because I just felt the school was inside the town. So you can be going home and so I said, I don't want to go to a school that is just porous like that. Because I visited Ife before, so I want to go to Ife. And I didn't know what God was up to. And, and most of the leading voices, most of the... Um, and I started sensing it then, that, look, I think God was connecting with people that are going to shape things in this nation. Um, so we have two of such men that my path crossed and we've stayed in contact and in relationship. Although I'm the one that is, um, that is, um, how do I put it now? I switch off. But the good thing is that when I switch on, they are happy to, to see, oh, you are back. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> So we have tonight um, Pastor Rex. And, and Pastor Yemi David. I, I will speak a little more about him when I come back to introduce him um, to us. But he was someone that God used to train, to correct, to instruct um, very practically back then in Ife. And every time I see him ministering very massive platforms, I was like, wow. The same fire has not gone down. The same fire, the same wisdom, very raw, very strong, very profound, and very practical. Same thing to Pastor Rex. So it's a very big honor and privilege for us that they are closing out this conference for us. I want to thank Pastor Rex for adjusting his schedule to fit our conference into it. He had things to do in Nigeria, pleaded with him, then rearranged his itinerary to be able to be here. He came in last night from, from Canada and he flew in this morning to just come and be with us. So let's be on our feet this morning, this evening. As we receive for the first session tonight, Pastor Larry Anasa. Did you see that? Glory to God. Amen. All right. Um, I know it's been an amazing week already, right? Super, like super, super, super amazing. And I was asking peace on that. I hope he's been having time to rest in between. <laughs> I know he'll rest when this is done, but could you help me celebrate peace on Peach Axe, please? <laughs> A lot of work is going on here all, all the time. <laughs> all the time. But please help me celebrate yourselves too, right? Yeah, because these things can happen because there's, there's a strong church responding consistently, being trained, being groomed, and all of that. So glory to God. It's just so amazing, and it's, it's, it's wonderful. Praise God. Peace and thank you for bringing me. I was still here in January, <laughs> so, and I'm back again. So thank you for your love, your love, your constant love over the years. And I know if Pichax doesn't love me, you won't bring me. So. <laughs> So thanks to the two of you. All right, and greetings from my home and everything. Everybody, I'm sure some are praying like they did the last day. Like, okay, so but it's good. we're going to have a good time. You know, praise God. Help me celebrate Pastor Yemi David. <laughs> Pastor Yemi has been constant in my life for over two decades. Wow. Over. <laughs> wow. Over two decades. Very constant. Very, he's been there. There. Yeah, yeah, it's a... Uh, so it's a privilege to have to do John the Baptist for him. <laughs> I'll do for running, and um, we'll have a good, good time, you know. So praise God. Hallelujah. A number of verses I would have loved to read, but I believe in my heart there's no need. Because you've been in a series of teaching sessions 
already. So, for instance, if I say open to John 7, I'm sure you have read John 7 more than once in this meeting. If I say open to John 4, I am sure you have read John 4, yes or no? Yes. So, I am sure, I know, I actually know you have read John 7, John 4. I will touch them and pick the things I need to, but a whole lot of the digging in, um, I am glad, all right? I, I believe, and maybe I'll say this, and it might be useful to someone. Whichever angle of a conference one is privileged to minister in, there's always what the Holy Spirit will use that angle to do, all right? For instance, there's the work of a starter, all right? And then we're privileged now to come in at the close of the conference. So there are things I would easily ride on. So it's just an advantage. You, you just got something there? All right, because someone might need that five years from now. All right. you know, so just use it. Praise God. And I want to appreciate every man of God, all the pastors here. Uh, thank you all for coming. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Neon, well done. <laughs> Amen to Jesus. Hallelujah. Are we ready? Yes, Are you sure? Yes, all right. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We give you praise. We thank you so much for your love, for all that you've been doing this week. So much revelation, impartation, healings, renewals, redirection, very many things that have taken place and are still taking place. Thank you because this conference has a lasting impact. Oh, thank you because Holy Hill never remains the same after this. Oh, we give you praise. We thank you for the privilege that we have to minister. Thank you because our hearts are open. We receive all that you have in store for us, Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, so <laughs> John chapter 4. <laughs> the conversation in John chapter 4 is one of my finest conversations in the entire Bible, and I say that sincerely. Um, I, I love the angle. I love how it began and how it was woven into where Jesus wanted it to get to. And certain important things is said. The truth is, in studying the life of the believer, something Jesus said in John 4 and then the 14th verse is super crucial to us. Now, the conference is titled River, right? All right. But then there's a connection between John 7 and John 4. Because the thing that will flow from you begins from inside you. I know you've heard that. You hear it again. All right? But you need to get it. The thing flowing from you begins where? Once again, the thing flowing from you, because in John 7, Jesus said, out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. So the thing flowing from you begins in you. Now, you have to therefore understand what is in you. I repeat, you therefore have to, and I use the word understand, what is where? In you. In you. There's this thing that happens to us, all right? Um, in Acts 3, Peter was at the beautiful gate, and you know the story, he met that man. And then in the sixth verse, Peter said, silver and gold I have none, but what did he say? Such as I don't have. Such as I'm trying to have. So Peter knew he had something. But the body of Christ would consistently be limited because we're not sure of what we have. Peter knew what he had. And he said to the man, such as I have. And a vast variety of our prayer points are filled with things we're trying to have that we already have. So we're looking for things that have been given. So we're not sure. And that lack of confidence affects prayer, affects faith. For instance, 1 John chapter 5 and verse 14 says, This is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. So there's a confidence in knowing the will of God. There's a confidence in knowing the mind of God. So there's a lack of confidence or an in inadequate proportion of confidence in the body of Christ because we don't know what is available. We don't know. Now, I understand this other thing about it. You know, when we feel like, because I don't experience something, that means maybe I don't have it. But you need to delete that from your thinking. That you don't experience it doesn't mean you don't have it. 
that you don't experience it according to scripture doesn't mean it's not yours. It just means you don't know how to harness it. But praying that I should have what I already have sets you backwards. And the church that Jesus is coming for is a glorious church. A church working triumphantly. So in that John chapter 4, let's see 13 and then 14. John 4, 13 and 14. Hallelujah. Jesus answered and said to her, Anybody who drinks of this water will what? First again, verse yeah, 14. Anyone who drinks of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I will give him will be where? Will be in him a well of water springing up. I'll run through this like I didn't see it will come back. But notice something here. Jesus said, when I give you water, it's like you're thirsty and I give you a cup of water. And you take a sip from the water I give, and suddenly, what was a cup to you becomes a well inside you. Did you see the language there? Whoever drinks of the water that I shall give will never thirst, but the water that I will give will become what? <laughs> will become what? A well where? In him. That means every believer has a well. Every believer carries a well. You say, but no, I think I need to tell Jesus I want to drink. No. The day you got saved, you drank. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 13. 1 Corinthians 12 and 13. Context in John 4 could be slightly different context in John 7, but there's a foundational context there. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free. What's the last line there? And might be asked to drink. No. What happened to us? So have you drank? It, does the verse say so? So the day you got saved, you drank. That means the day you got saved, you drank of the Spirit. The day you got saved, you were born of the Spirit. You drank of the Spirit. See it again. By one spirit, we were baptized into the body. That means you got born again. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether born or free, and we were made. I love when the Bible uses the word made. You were not asked to drink. When you see Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4, verse 6 rather, it didn't say you were asked to sit. It said you were made to sit. Asking to sit is, I'm requiring your consent. You were not asked to sit and raise us up together. And what did he do to us? Made us sit. It means you woke up born again sitting down. I don't know if you got what I just said. Okay, did you knock the gate of heaven? Excuse me, sir. That chair, sir. Can I sit? Did you do that? Did God say, um, now that you're saved, I want to ask you if you would like to sit? No, you found out that you're seated together with him. You were made to sit. You were born sitting down. <laughs> Let's not enter that. <laughs> Back again to that Corinthians. So the language made to means your consent wasn't asked. So the way you were made to sit, you were made to drink. Now the way it affects the sitting, it affects the drinking. We are made to sit together with him in heavenly places, which is far above principalities and powers. Do you know you can be defeated as a Christian whereas you've been made to sit? Have we been made to sit? Are Christians sometimes suffering defeat? Yes. Have they not been made to sit? So the fact that they are suffering defeat experientially, does that deny the fact that they've been made to sit? But we go and pray, oh God, when will you lift me? Oh God, no, you were made to sit. You are seated in the highest place possible. So it's not asking him to do what he has done. It's you coming to a revelation of what has been done. The same way about the drinking, you were made to drink. It means you got born again and you drank. Now we've drank it, we didn't know what we drank. So we come to the scripture to realize what exactly have I drank. So that it could have impact in my life. Did the Bible show you that you have been made to drink? Have you drank? Now what did you drink? <laughs> 
Oh, thank you, Lord. Don't forget, what flows from you comes from within you. And Peter said to that man, such as I have. So did you drink the Holy Spirit? So say, I have the Holy Spirit. Are you sure? So say, I have the Holy Spirit. The challenge in the church is that we sometimes, now prayer is exciting, great, we all love to pray, but there's what prayer can do, there's what the renewal of mind is supposed to do. So if there's something you need to renew your mind on and you're praying about it, you might still be delayed on it because you should renew your mind. Are you getting that now? Oh, thank you, Lord. Say, I have the Holy Spirit. He lives in me. He lives in me permanently. He lives in me now. Now, in the course of this conference, I'm sure you've also learned that the Holy Spirit is the river. Yes or no? So I can fly freely on that. It's been established, so I'm happy. Now, the Holy Spirit is the river. The Holy Spirit is the water. The Holy Spirit is what's in you. And he's also who is in you. True or false? 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. 1 Corinthians 3, 16. Say, I've drank of the Holy Spirit. It says, know you not that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells where? Dwells where? Dwells where? Amplify it, please. Do you not discern? And what? That's what we need. We need the discernment. We need an understanding. Do you not discern and understand that the whole church, you the whole church, are correct. Are God's temple, is sanctuary, and that God's spirit has his temporary dwelling in you. Temporary. 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 I'm not trying to pull you. I'm hitting at something. Temporary. Now, there's a revelation, and I understand it. When you say, God, visit me. But check the language in that verse. What is he doing? Now, I'm in Abuja, and I'm here with travel bag because I'm not staying here forever. If I was relocating to Abuja, what would I move with me? So the moment the Holy Spirit moved into you, what did he carry with him? Think about it again. Because you need a baby. So you say, God, visit me with a child because the language is treated or constructed like that in the Old Testament. And I understand it. Once again, please, I understand it. But the moment he moved inside you, the power to get a child moved inside you. You say, God, visit me. I need healing. And I understand once again. Please understand the language. The moment he moved into you, the power to heal, he moved it into you. So a believer can ask for healing. But what you have is more than healing. And this is it. We rise to the level of revelation that we receive. So I need you to receive this. Because we've been hearing about the Holy Spirit. Question is, who is the Holy Spirit? Genesis 1 says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void. Darkness upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. So the Holy Spirit that lives in you and me is the person that moved upon the face of the waters in Genesis. Mary was asking the angel, how will this thing be since I know that the man? The angel said to her, the spirit of God will come upon you. The power of the most High will overshadow you. Meaning the ability of a lady that was not with a man yet to have a baby was by the Holy Spirit. Who lives in you? The one that made Mary get pregnant without sperm. Who lives in you? The one that anointed Elijah, Elisha, David, everybody that you know in the Bible lives in you. Who lives in you? The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. Do you know who you drank? Do you know what you drank? The believer, listen. And sometimes these things, even when I read them myself, I'm like, there's a gap between experience and what's there. But the truth is, if you keep shouting and praying, no, you don't. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, please. We have to keep jamming this truth into our minds. 2 Corinthians 3, 18. Um, regular King James will be fine. No, New King James is okay. New King James, thank you. But we all, with unveiled face, doing what? Beholding as in a mirror the glory of God, 
are of the Lord. We are transformed into a lesser image. We are transformed into a similar image. Which image? But we are with unveiled face. We're looking into a mirror and we're looking at what are we looking at in that mirror? What are we looking at in that mirror? What are we looking at in that mirror? I'm in front of the mirror and I'm looking at what in the mirror? Then I will be changed into which image? What is the image? So the assignment of Christianity is there is a finished version of us. Our job is to keep staring at the finished version till we become the finished version. But what we do is I look at the finished version, I look at myself, and I see a disparity. And I say, God, why will you make me like that? No, he finished you in Christ. He perfected you in Christ. So when you look into that mirror, what do you see? The glory. Do you know who that glory is? When you stand in front of a mirror, who do you see? Is it not yourself? So when you look at the mirror of God, so who do you think is calling glory? When you look into a mirror, you see yourself. So you look into the mirror, you are seeing the glory, you, you are finished you. And then you are changed into that. Romans chapter number 8. We'll start from the popular one we know. Verse 28. Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to those that are called according to his purpose. 29, please. For whom he foreknew, he also predestinated to be conformed to what? Image of his son, that he might be firstborn among many brethren. Let's go. Moreover, whom he what? Predestined, he also did call. And whom he called, he might glorify. He, he will glorify after 40 days of prayer and fasting. What did he say? Is there a glorified person here? Listen, I know your circumstance doesn't reflect it. But once again, you don't change by looking at yourself. You change by looking at the mirror. I repeat, you don't change by staring at yourself. You change by looking at what's in the mirror. The mirror is your glorified version. Your, the mirror is your finished version. You, the mirror is your perfected version in Christ. If you keep staring at yourself, you keep seeing your weaknesses, your inabilities, everything about you, your lack. But the version in the mirror, listen, no matter how sick you are, the version in the mirror of you is not sick. In fact, your version in the mirror cannot be sick. Your version in that mirror is not barren. Your version in that mirror cannot be barren. Did you hear cannot? As in cannot. They don't understand the language. Why did you think that Jesus cursed the fig tree? My own assumption is because where Jesus is coming from, Leaves are always having fruit. Tomorrow. That's the Ezekiel 47 and your Revelation 22. The trees always bring forth fruit every month. Where Jesus is coming from, there's always fruit. And that's you. In and out of season. But you today, we win some, lose some. You today, up today, bang tomorrow, good today, not good. Money today, no money tomorrow, collect salary, two weeks, is gone. But the you in that mirror, you're like a tree planted by the rivers of water. You bring forth your fruit in your season. Your leaves will never wither. Anything you do will prosper. There's a finished version of you. So the more we look at ourselves, we see the wrong thing. You look at the wrong thing. The more you look into the mirror, the more you change. Say change. change. Say transform. So we have to keep our face in the mirror and you need to know, okay, if I drank the Holy Ghost, if I've drunk from the Holy Ghost, what exactly did I drink? Who is this Holy Spirit? Who is this person in me? Because I'm going to run us through a few exercises this morning. Did I say morning? Evening. I'm going to run us through a few exercises quickly. Thank you, Father. Say the Holy Spirit lives in me. Say it lives in me. Permanently. Say say it lives in me. Permanently. He lives in me. Permanently. He lives in me. 
permanently. There's a well in me, a well of life. It's in me permanently. Let's go back to that John 4 now. 14. There are interesting characteristics of this well. Very interesting. I won't stay long on this version. You know what? Let's just move quickly. Amplified. Very interesting. We have taps in our homes, right? And the tap or faucet, right? They have controls. On, off. Let me just go straight and speak English. This one doesn't have control. Doesn't have a switch. Never turns off. Never turns on. It's always on. You see for yourself. Whoever takes a drink of the water that I give him, have you taken a drink? Whoever takes a drink of water that I give him shall never, no never, this is called double emphasis, but you, you see that. No never be thirsty anymore. Oh, I'm depressed. Oh, I'm lonely. I'm tired. Do you know who you drank? Oh, I'm just frustrated. I'm getting depressed. Do you know who you drank? And, and because we don't know who we drank, Jesus was leaving this earth and he said, it is expedient for you that I go. If I don't go, he will not come. The he has now come since, and we're almost like he never came. Because we don't know who we got. So this is not, oh God, give us power. Do you know who you, he said you will receive power. When he comes, he has come since. And we are still almost like the most powerless people in the world. You do a crusade, it's a healing crusade. 85% of the people needing healing in that crusade are Christians. We're like the most powerless people on earth. We're the ones needing counseling. We're the ones needing prayer. We're the ones packing out every place where there's prayer going on. It's us. Not knowing that each one of us carries the same anointing on Jesus Christ. To the degree to which has been deposited in you. But because we don't know what's in us. And who is in us? We are so beggarly hoping for something to change. Change happened, you just didn't notice. Oh, but we're catching the revelation this week. And that's why you've been learning the things you've been learning. So back to that verse, please. Whoever takes a drink of the water that I give him shall never, no, never be thirsty anymore. But the water that I will give him, watch this now, will become a what? Spring, watch this, watch this. I want you to picture yourself as you're reading the verse. A spring of what? Water, that is what? Did you see welling up? What does it mean for something to well up? Welling up, what's it doing? Flowing, what else is it doing? How often? How often? How often? Where, where is the location? Onto, into, for... Meaning there's a consistent supply of eternal life inside of you. Even the Christian that died in the accident, there was a consistent, continuous supply. Even the Christians that died in the hospital, right there, there was a consistent, continuous supply. Even the one that just got tired of life and ran into the road, there was a consistent, constant, continuous supply all that time. You say, but why didn't it work? Man is three parts. Spirit so body the realities you find in god's word have been permanently sorted out in your spirit but the gap now is in the mind the mind has to bridge by receiving revelation what has happened in your spirit and translate into your experiences that's why you saw that second corinthians chapter three that you have to keep looking so that you can be changed the word change there is the same word in Greek for transformed in Romans 12, verse 2. That says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. For instance now, do Christians get afraid? Yes. Should Christians get afraid? Watch this. Do you know that your spirit does not know how to be afraid? You know the verse. For God has not given us. So you don't have it. The spirit in you does not understand fear. 
You say, but I'm afraid. Because your mind is not renewed. Your mind is not in agreement with what has happened in your spirit because your mind is not exposed to that fact. So that's why churches are having people that are depressed and we're having counselors and we're having things when the counselor, the counselor, or is that not one of his names? Lives inside every one of us. And the depression in the body of Christ now is higher than when it was in the 70s and 80s. The counselor lives in us. All kinds of sickness in the world is the sickness in the church. Your spirit doesn't know how to be sick. Because your spirit cannot be sick. Because your spirit carries the exact DNA of God. Doesn't know how to be sick. Doesn't know how to be afraid. Your spirit doesn't know how to be confused. Doesn't understand it. Because that's not his DNA. That's not his world. But that spirit now lives inside a body with a mind. And the spirit needs to relate in this world. But the mind has to pick the reality in the spirit from the scriptures and impose it into the experiences of the world. If that doesn't happen, we will keep living with so glorified spirits in a limited you know, experience. Is this helpful? <laughs> So you need to know who you are on the inside, who you carry on the inside, what you have. In me, say with me, in me. me. Amplify, please. Let's see. So say from it. In me. (laughs) The the, the verse we're looking at earlier. (laughs) Just just the last part there. Say, in me me. is a spring of water welling up, flowing bubbling continually within me unto into for eternal life say this way inside me there's a constantly ever flowing ever bubbling water of life how constant 24 hours of every day doesn't have stats it doesn't have stuff tpt please this same verse If anyone drinks water, the living water I give him, they will never thirst again and, I'll, you know, and will be satisfied. <laughs> For when you drink the water I give you, it becomes, what does it become? Gushing, gushing fountain of who? Gushing. Can you picture when they say something is gushing? Oh, doctor says I have typhoid. Doctor says I have cancer. Doctor says I got... <laughs> something is gushing inside me. Every disease, every germ, every virus has to die. Why? This body has the life of God. Because of the person living in it. If you live in a house and there's a problem with your plumbing, won't you fix it? There's a problem with your window, won't you fix it? There's a problem with your burglary, won't you fix it? Where does the Holy Ghost live? The fixer has to fix it. The person living in me is the fixer. Now this is his house. So if there's a problem with my plumbing, kidney is not working. And I'm looking for help. Prayer. Doctor. Fixer. is living in me. Imagine a plumber and you went to visit a plumber and his house has plumbing problem. You went to see a carpenter and his furniture is broken. You wonder if he understands his assignment. The Holy Spirit. The same one that raised Jesus from the dead. Lives inside you permanently. And you say there's a problem with your kidney. There's something with yourselves. The fixer lives there. The resurrector lives there. The life himself lives there. The same one that knows how to raise the dead lives there. The same power of resurrection lives there. The gushing power. The message translation calls it an Atesian spring. So maybe engineers understand that language. I don't know which profession. Maybe engineering, right? It's an attestious or geography or geology. Maybe those ones, okay. It's an attestious spring. It's like a fountain. It comes from under the earth. Very forceful. Very forceful. Message transition. Let's see yourselves there. Gushing fountains of endless life. 
just same verse. Now, Messi sometimes can put two, three verses together. We'll sort it out. But whenever you find it, just bring it out. Just the same John 4. Say, it's in me. Say, it's in me now. It's in me now. Thank you. Jesus said, anyone who drinks this water will get thirsty again and again. Anyone who drinks what I give will never thirst, not ever. Double emphasis. The water I give, what did he say it will be? An attention spring within. Gushing fountains of what? Not a fountain that you can start and stop. Never did, never know did. Not that one. Gushing fountain of endless. Oh, glory to God. How many of you have seen X-Men before? Maybe you're the comic fan or the movie fan. You know Wolverine. You know you can get healed supernaturally. Do you know you can? When next you get a cut in your hand, speak to it. Try to seal up in the name of Jesus. It works. Do you know who you are? They came to arrest Jesus and they cut off Malchus's ear. I mean, they cut off Peter, cut off Malchus's ear. Jesus did not pray. He picked the ear they caught and he just slapped it back. The thing gone. The same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead lives in you. Paul that told us that was in the island of Malta in Acts 28. A snake beat him. His response to that stimuli was not, yeah! His response was, yeah! His response was, shake the beast off. It was this same Paul that told us that the same Holy Spirit lives in you. This same Paul said the same resurrection power lives in you. So they said it's cancer, now you're crying. The spirit that raised us from the dead, what's cancer to him? They said it's two more, so what do we do about that? They said it's ovarian cyst. Okay, so prayer point. They said you don't have spam count. Who is counting? Hold on. How many sperm counts did Mary need to give birth to Jesus? Who is counting? Who is counting? We misplaced this thing because there's revelation. You say I'm SS. I want to change it to AA. Do you know the thing can change and the doctor is still reading SS? But your own faith is on they must write it. I want to see. You're walking by sight. Everything can change about you. They still read what they are reading. There are people who are giving birth to children. The doctor is still reading low sperm count in the examination. Who is counting? They should be counting. You'll be having baby. That's your own business. <laughs> what do you want? The count or the baby? Yes. So face your priorities. So you want to give birth? Oh, until my SS is changing to AA. I don't know if my children. Do you know who you are? Do you know the life in you? Do you know the life that will transmit into your children? We need to rearrange this mindset. Someone is sneezing beside you. Say, ah, 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 don't give it to me now. You? No, no, I'm not trying to be funny. You? You catch it? You from where? Where, where, where? How? Do you know who lives in you? Do you know who you are? Do you know the fountain of life inside of you? The same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead. He lives in you. There's one season on you, you catch cold, you. And it will keep happening because our minds have accepted it. Jesus said in Mark 16, these signs will follow them that believe. In my name, they will cast out devils. But now we have devils being cast out of us. He said they will speak with new tongues. Now we argue whether tongues are correct or not. And we sometimes don't even know when to speak it. He said we'll take up serpents. If a rat enters here now, the church will scatter. He said, you drink deadly things. They will not hurt you. Beans is purging our stomach. He said, they will lay hands on the sick. The sick will recover 
hands are being laid on us because we are the sick. The same signs Jesus said to follow the church. The church doesn't work in the reality today. He said you would take deadly things, it will not hurt you. The mosquito landed on your body. Ah, ah, fever, fever. You, you fever. You from where? You from where to where? He said you would take deadly things. A mosquito is already deadly to you. You've not even taken deadly thing yet though. Mosquito bites. You, do you know who lives in you? Every cell in your body. Every cell in your body. Every bone in your body responds to the life of God. He said in you is a gushing fountain. Never ending. Never stopping. Gushing fountain. Gushing fountain. That disease is dying. All right, it's passing out of your body right now. Right now. Because the revelation is knocking it out. That sickness is going. Itches all over your body? You. Why? Didn't you read that you were bought with a price? Therefore glorify God in your body. Sickness doesn't glorify God. Rashes all over your body cannot glorify God. Do you know who you are? Do you know who you are? We have the Holy Ghost. Do you know who he is? <coughs> Jesus could not do ministry without him. If our Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power that he went about doing good, healing. That means anywhere he shows up, healing was taking place. Now he lives in you and you are the same one that is sick. Why you? How come you? You say, I mean, I don't understand the problem you are facing. No, do you know who you carry? Because the Holy Ghost is the one that anointed Jesus, yes or no? Because Jesus in Luke 4, 18 said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me. And what will the anointing do? Isaiah chapter 10, 27 says, in that day, his burden will be taken away from off your shoulder. His yoke from off your neck. And the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing. So if the anointing breaks yokes, if it destroys burdens, and the Holy Spirit is the anointing, that means the anointing lives in you. And the anointing in you, oh, you are not ordinary. And it's not a statement of pride. It's just knowing who you are. All right, because true humility is accepting what God said about you. Yes. So if God says you're anointed, you will be proud not to agree. Yes. Do you understand this? Say I'm anointed. I'm anointed. Where, where is the Holy Spirit? So where do you think the anointing is? First John chapter 2, verse 27. First John 2, 27. It says, but the anointing which you have received of him, where does he abide? Amen. So if anointing abides in us, why are we living like we don't have the anointing? Why are we suffering like we don't have the anointing? Why are we confused like we don't have the anointing? Why are we going through things like we don't have the anointing? Uh, why, why, why are we doing that? Why are we doing that? Does he live in you? Does he live in you? So start, you know, a bit. We'll finish our exercises tomorrow. So I'm thankful that peace don't give us two sessions. Glory to God. Say he lives in me. Say he lives in me now. He lives in me now. He lives in me now. The same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead lives in me. The same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead. He lives in me. He lives in me. He lives in me permanently. He lives in me now. He lives in me now. So in me, inside me, there's a gushing fountain. A gushing fountain of endless life. It's in me now. It's in me now. It's in me now. It's in my cells. It's in my bloodstream. 
It's in my tissues. It's in my organs. It's in my systems. It's in me now. 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 In me. Now. The life of God. In me. The fountain of life. In me. Resurrection power. In me. Right now. Right now. In me. Now. My body is his house. My body is his home. So there's life in me. He lives in me. His life is here. He lives in me. He lives in me now. From the top of my head. From the top of my head. To the soles of my feet. I have life. I have life. I have life. It's running through me. Gushing through me. Running through me. Flowing through me. Bubbling through me. Gushing through me. Gushing through me. Gushing through me. Flushing out sickness. Flushing out disease. Flushing out viruses. Flushing out germs. Now. He lives in me. He lives in me. He lives in me now. 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 Right now. Not tomorrow. Not next week. When? Your mind has to accept it. God told Joshua, this book of the law will not depart out of your mouth. You will meditate in it when? That's what I'm teaching you now. You have to keep bombarding your mind with it. Someone again repeats, the blessed is a man who walks not in counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the world of sinners, nor sins of scum, for his delight to be in the law of the Lord. In that law, he will meditate day and night. You keep jamming your mind with the reality. Sometimes you are so confused, and you say, no, the anointing is in me. Let's go down for one minute before I go. 1 John 2, 20, maybe 30 seconds. 1 John chapter 2, verse 20. He says, I have an unction from the Holy One. Say, I know all things. Say, say, I know all things. Even when you just made the dumbest mistake of your life. Say, I know all things. It's not a denial. It's you drilling inside your spirit. I mean, inside your soul. Till it connects with what's in your spirit. Because inside your spirit is all knowledge. Why? The Holy Spirit lives there. But our minds are blank. You made a wrong decision. Three wrong relationships in one year. You feel like a fool. You feel like a failure. Go back to the mirror. Stop looking at the failure you because you're not. Look at the glorious you in that mirror and stare at it. And stare at it. And stare at it. And stare at it. Say the life of God is in me. Say the anointing is in me. The power of God is in me. The wisdom of God is in me. The Holy Spirit is in me. Do you believe that?
yourself, Lord, I am. Lord, I am your glory. Hey. And I will speak of your glory. I will show forth your beauty. Hallelujah. And if I dance, it won't be enough. Hallelujah. If I shout, it won't be enough. Heaven speaks of your glory. Let's appreciate Pastor Rex. Hallelujah. Praise God. So we are, see, we are happy that he's still with us till tomorrow. Okay. Um, a lot to say about Pastor Amy. A lot. But I won't say plenty. I'll just say a few, like two or three. A lot. Um, You know, when the first time I hosted Pastor Kingsley and his wife in our church, we hosted Pastor Kingsley and Pastor Mildred came along um, the first time. And they were done, the first night they were done and we were in the green room. And then we started talking. And I just mentioned your name. I said, oh, Pastor Amy, I was a living word. I was, oh, hey, I know, because I now understand. That I, because that she's been that anytime I'm preaching and she sit my that you could see a lot of the gesticulations and like the style. So, hey, okay, she's now okay now. She now know where I came from. You know, the first time I met Pastor Emi, I was I was in this, I was a member of the fellowship he founded back on campus in Ife. 
And we've done ministry before that time. We've done a lot of ministry. You know, but if you are operating very crude, um, you're anointed but crude, <laughs> you can't go far. You can't be exported in that sense. And so God had to channel me through that fellowship. And it was by the Spirit, by the way. It was by the Spirit that I joined that fellowship. And, and, I, and I think the fellowship was a training ground. Not, it was, I don't think. The fellowship was a training ground for me, um, for ministry. And I learned ministry. And the most important lesson that I learned on that, in that fellowship was how to manage relationships. That was, that was what God took me to learn there that how to manage relationship and how to, how to separate your emotions from the will of God. I was telling somebody some days ago that without knowing, without knowing what I was doing, at the point in the fellowship, there were enough reasons, a lot of things that are happening around that if I was not putting my eyes on what God told me, I would have been offended. And if I had taken that offense, I will not be pastoring today. I will have been crippled. If you have been destined to play football, that you are skilled, gifted to play football, then you got amputated. You will not play football. If you will play the Paralympics, it's not, that is not to say that Paralympics is not football. But you will not play mainstream football. You won't. Because it is important that you know that when there is value in a place, the enemy will fight it. And I'm so grateful to God for connecting me with Pastor Yemi. And also affording me lessons, life lessons, practical life lessons upon which my life is built and upon which this ministry is built. I was telling, um, I was telling a friend during the course of this conference, I said, if I had allowed the, the, the voice of the enemy to prevail in my soul at a point in my life, because, you know, there are times, you know, be careful how you, how you manage relationship and how you exit places. Uh, because if you exit and bang the door, you will need that door. But shame and reproach will not allow you to open it again. Because I cannot imagine now if I cannot now relate to Pastor Amy. Ah! You just be looking at him up there. And you'll not be telling stories. And I want to really appreciate you, sir, for the practical lessons that, because your, the fellowship, Living World Fellowship was an academy, was a Bible school. Practical lessons in the ninth, he would invite us as students to his house and begin to teach us strategies. I remember one of those days he, he, he called the leaders and restructured the fellowship. You know, you know at times, you know, Pastor Yami, these days when you are telling people what to do, they'll be arguing with you. We didn't argue. Okay, this is what we want us to do. Let's, and when we apply it, we'll get results. And when we get the results, we will not forget it was the one that told us to do it. Because we're the one that produced the results. But the strategy that you applied was, they gave you, go and do this. So those are the things we still use till now. At least most of us that were in the fellowship at that level that had the opportunity of being schooled by him on practice. How to take a, a you know, let me just say this before I call him up. He told us once, fellowship was about a hundred and something of us then. Maybe less than. He said, he said, you guys can take this campus. You can take, you can take this campus. Call midnight. In his house. See, so this is what you're going to do. Go and study the four biggest fellowships on the campus. Study them. Check what they are doing well. Analyze. Then integrate it and apply it to what you are doing here in series. In two years, we're one of the top five fellowships on the campus. 
Now, now I'm saying this publicly to appreciate him for teaching us. Because when we took those things and started getting results, we didn't tell people he was the one that taught us. We're the ones that did it. But what we did, we were taught. Because if we did the wrong things for two years, we won't get the right result. So God had put upon his lips wisdom that can be applied. Listening to him those years until now, you will get practical wisdom that you can apply. It was from me in my head this thing I say all the time. You, the ground does not need to be hungry for you to sow seed. The ground does not need to be hungry for you to sow seed. Your father does not need to be poor for you to give them money. Your parents don't need to be broke for you. To, you when you give to them, it is your own destiny you are helping. You are not feeding the ground by pl planting corn. It is your destiny you are securing. Those are the practical things we've learned over the years that have shaped us. And any glory that we have, they are traceable to the lips of men like this that have taught us the things that we are using now to shine in our only two way. I want you to stand to your feet this evening as we receive my pastor, the senior pastor of Global Impact Church, Pastor Yemi David. and impact and influence of Holy Hill. Thank you for your servant and his wife, uh, the, his family and the leadership of this great church. Thank you for this great conference. Thank you for what you have been doing since we started. We are grateful for the message we just heard, the instructions, the illumination, and we trust you for another dose. Help us to see the things we were not seen before so we can bear greater fruits. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And God's people said, Amen. God's people shouted. Amen. Let's appreciate Pastor Sunday and Pastor Chaco. Thank you. Uh, well, you made Abuja a, a good home for us. Uh, anytime I'm coming here, it's always a joy because you're here. Thank you for your consistency. And I love what I see here. Can we put our hands together for ourselves, the leaders? This is excellent. Excellent, excellent. Pastor Rex, thank you for helping uh, to renew our mind to seeing things. Uh, I saw a lot of ministers of the gospel here. Prophet Wale, thank you for coming. I'm glad to be here, and you dragged me for tomorrow morning, <laughs> but it's a privilege to be here. Uh, I believe that this session will also be a blessing to us in Jesus' mighty name. Yeah. Holy Spirit, our eyes are open our eyes for them. Enlighten us in Jesus' name. You can put your hands together for Jesus now as you get seated. Um, Pastor Rex was saying something about, you know, even when the things don't read uh, with the medical practitioners, it doesn't mean you don't have it. And I, I, I agree because there was a time my wife, Pastor Bimbo, went for some just like annual check in a hospital, and the doctor looked at her and asked, Ah, madam, do you have children? Because from what they saw, she was not supposed to have children. We were just laughing. <laughs> I was there. I said, I said, yes. You saw something, I think, in the womb, that the way it was positioned, she wasn't supposed to have children. Thank God we didn't even know that. Because we have four children now. <laughs> so understand that. It's true. Thank God we didn't hear those things then. You know, be binding and losing in that sense. Um, I agree that the body of Christ needs... Can we get on the... Just softly on the keyboard. Just... God is your strength. <laughs> and if we play all week or something. I agree that the body of Christ needs a lot of uh, mind renewal. It will help shape our prayers. Okay? There are many things we already have that we shouldn't be, like, you know, asking God for. Uh, I rather teach on enforcement that this is my lot and it's not happening. I mean, this is my destiny in Christ, and my life is not reflecting it. I want to see it happen. It's not God holding it back from me. It is me that need to align 
And the Holy Spirit is the one that helps us to align. When, when I started studying about the Holy Spirit several years ago, I just love him. I tell him, is heaven on earth. When you walk with the Holy Spirit to a measure, you are not really thinking, I want to go to heaven. Believe me. Because it's heaven on earth. Because when we say we're going to heaven, okay, no sickness, no disease, no this, no confusion. Those are the things the Holy Spirit brings into our lives. You live a heavenly life here in the midst of the hellish situations around you. And I'm telling you the truth. The peace of God is here. That counselor is there. When a situation comes up in our church, in our family, I lock my door, enter somewhere. You are the counselor. What do you have? If he now tells me, okay, call Pastor Sunday or call Pastor Rex, that is the counsel. But following that counsel will lead to peace. It's heaven on earth. It's all that we need. Believe me. And I pray that as we begin to round up this conference, our work with the Holy Spirit will go deeper and stronger in Jesus' mighty name. I'll run through some stuff that I think will bless us. I've titled it, The Spirit and the Covenant. The Holy Spirit and the Covenant. Or the Spirit and the Covenant. I had a strong impression um, uh, when I was on campus about God's covenant with us. It turned my life around. And if there's anything the Holy Spirit would always want to reveal to you and I is the fact that you are a covenant child. Can we say that this evening? I'm a covenant child. <laughs> say it louder. I'm a covenant child. <laughs> it's not an ordinary statement. You know, the moment uh, Pastor Sunday got married to uh, Pastor Chaco, she is his wife. That means she has been separated unto him. There are ladies all around, but she has been separated unto him. The moment you give your life to Jesus, you are now born again, you have been separated unto God. In the midst of the masses and things happening all over, it is not what is happening to the masses that happen to you. The covenant prevails in your life. Very, very important for us to understand that the Holy Spirit helps us to see what that covenant is all about. Ephesians 2, uh, I think verse 11. Ephesians 2, verse 11. Uh, it was talking about when you were without Christ. Therefore, remember that you, once Gentiles in the flesh, who are called on circumcision by what is called the circumcision, made in the flesh by hands. That, can we read it together? Okay, one to go. That at that time, you are... Been from and from having and without. Stay on this verse. That at that time, when you were not in Christ, you were aliens. You are far from the commonwealth of Israel. You are strangers from the covenants. That means that covenant has many aspects. Covenant of protection, covenant of progress, covenant of healing. He said, a whole lot. He said, when you are without Christ, you are far from it. You had no hope and without God in the world. That means now that I'm in Christ, I have hope. Now that I'm in Christ, I have access to the covenants of promise. Now that I'm in Christ, I'm not an alien from the commonwealth of Israel. Okay, so Galatians 3, verse 13 and 14. I, I always love when um, we see how Christ connected us with the blessings of Abraham. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, curse is everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might what? So we, we, we speak of generational blessings, not generational curses. Okay? Say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Say, like you believe it. I'm yes, I'm blessed. Say, that the blessings of Abraham might come. That is what has come, not curses. And just like the rod of Moses swallowed up all the rod of the magicians, this one that came swallows all the curses. And if it's not looking like it, you now enforce it. You angrily enforce it. 
I am blessed like Abraham. Therefore, curses you cannot prevail in my life. Not that father, come and remove these curses. It doesn't work that way. I am blessed like Abraham. Therefore, everything that looks like a curse is, is illegal packing. Let's look at some people that had this blessing on their life in the Old Testament. And if the ministration of the flesh be that glorious, how much more the ministration of the spirit? I saw something in Genesis. Oh, God of heaven. Genesis 30 verse 25. I mean, I'm sure you all know the story of Jacob. Jacob ran away after, as it were, collect, collecting the blessing from his father, Isaac, and ran to uh, the house of this man called Laban. Now, for, for thorough understanding, Laban was an idol worshiper. He was given to sorcery and divination. So, he's been trying to cheat Jacob, but it didn't work out. To help you see the power of the blessing, which we have in the Holy Spirit in the New Covenant, that power, that person in us. You know, you talk about X-Men. Look at the Superman. Can you imagine they say Superman is your helper? Will you ever be afraid? Your comforter. And it came to pass, when Rachel had born Joseph, that Jacob said to Laban, Jacob is the staff, Jacob is the employee. Said to Laban, send me away. I may go to my own place and my own country. Now, that's the staff employee telling the employer. Look at what the employee, employer said in verse 27. Or verse, verse 27. And Laban, the employer, the boss, the ogre, the owner of the business, said to him, please, what? Stay. If I have found favor, for I have learned by what? That the Lord has what? For whose sake? So who is your guy? I even respect such unbelievers in court. You are the talisman. There was a difference when you came into the business. You carry something. Now that's the Old Testament. He said, I've learned. By, look at this in NIV. NIV. I experienced it. He was telling Jacob. I hope Jacob knew. I hope. But Laban said to him, If I have found favor in your eyes, please stay. Or oh, guys, blessing this time. Please don't go. I have learned by what? So which one is now stronger? The diviner or the covenant child? This is how you fight. This is how the Holy Spirit helps you with understanding. So you hear somebody in your office, they are doing sorcery. They are doing this one. You come out with your staff. You come out with your power, with anger. This man is given to divination. That divination did not help the business. Or whatever thing he saw, he saw a difference. That your own passed my own. He said, I've learned by experience, by divination, that the Lord has blessed me because of you. That means Jacob was carrying something. Now, can you not imagine in the New Testament with the Holy Ghost on your inside? That means wherever you are working, they must flourish. The difference must be clear. Glory to God. I mean, if you look at the next verse, he said, name your wages. He was now telling him, okay, okay, look at it. So who is the ogre? Who is the owner? Like, can you imagine if you, Jacob, now own the business? So my, my, my thought is, whether I'm an employee or employer, I flourish. So I flourish. I flourish in the land. Genesis 22 verse 15. These are, you know, the realities of what this covenant does. So the Holy Spirit is to execute that in us, in the new covenant. I'm not afraid of any unbeliever. This revelation helps you to stand strong. Then the angel of the Lord said, called Abraham a second time out of heaven uh, and said, By myself I have what? Are you here? I have what? Swore. Says the Lord. Who swore? swore? He said, Because you have done this thing and I have done we tell your son, your only son, your son, your only son, in blessing I will what? I'm multiplying, I multiply your descendants as what? 
And as the sand which was upon the seashore, and your descendants, your descendants will possess the gates of their enemies. Now, God swore. I, I was sharing, I, I think, one back this year, and I was trying to help people see that revelation by the Holy Ghost that when you say somebody swore, I mean, in Africa, we understand it a bit. In legal terms, you understand it. When you, when you swore under oath, it's a big thing. It's a, it's, a, it's a big thing. It's not just that. It's not just a promise. No, it's more than a promise. It's binding on you. So God swore to Abraham and his descendants. That, I mean, can we have this verse in message translation? So everyone connected to the blessing of Abraham or to Abraham, you have this on your life. Because God, God is binding on God for you and I to flourish. A message translation of that particular verse or that portion of scripture. You know, I use that example of um, most of our tribal uh, places where somebody makes a promise. When you first make a promise and the person is doubting the promise, are you sure you will do it? Are you not sure you will do it? I will do it. Then I say, go and swear. Because when you saw under oath, you have, you have upgraded it. It's not binding on you. And when they swear like that, they swear with a higher power. Power that is bigger than them. That power is to force them to do what they swore. So, when you even see what the higher power will do, you are compared to perform. So you see Adaku and Chigoze. Chigoze says, I'm going to Bodoyibo. And Adaku say, uh, if you go to Bodoyibo, Chigoze, you will forget, forget me. Chigoze say, no, I can never forget you, Adaku. I love you. Adaku say, that's how you go to see brother, make he left, he forgot. Uh, He forget you, no, he will forget me. She goes and say, No, I will not forget you. Oh, yeah, let's go and swear at Ogugu. Uh -huh. <laughs> they now carry themselves to the shrine. And then she goes, They will now swear by a higher power and say, If I forget Adaku, may my leg break into pieces, may all my business come down. When Adak will hear the, the implication of forgetting her, she's now at rest. That even if he doesn't remember me, he's will not finish. <laughs> that is as good as okay. She goes himself, when he sees what will happen, we remember Adak. <laughs> when he meets somebody in Obodo Yimbo and he's trying to like the person, when he gets home in the night and Ogugu show up in the night, <laughs> So remember, say, hey, your leg will break, your business will go down. The next day, we'll call Nancy. Nancy, I'm sorry. I, I can't do this. Nancy will say, why? You can't understand. <laughs> yes, Nancy cannot understand. <laughs> that was what God was trying to do, only that there was no higher power. He swore by himself. Now listen, he's turned my life around. He said to Abraham, your seed will be blessed by me. Your seed, your descendants. He swore. I think Hebrews 6. So you understand Hebrews 6. Hebrews 6. Um, is it Hebrews 6? Yes, Hebrews 6. Is it Hebrews 6, 13. He swore. That's what Paul was trying to say. I think Paul is the writer of Hebrews from what um, research shows. He said, for when God made a promise to Abraham, because he could swear by what? no one greater. What did he do? He swore by himself. Next line or next verse. Saying, surely what? Blessing, I will bless you and multiplying, I will. Your business will not go down again. In 2024, you will multiply exceedingly. This blessing leads to multiplication. So what the Holy Ghost will now begin to do, he is to now begin to show you what it will take to multiply through strategy, through counsel, through direction. But this is your glory. He said, I will bless them. Look at the next verse, verse 15. And so, after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. Verse 16, glory to God. He said, for men, men, he goes, eh? indeed, swear by the greater, Ogugu. And an oath for what? Is 
for them an end of all doubt. Can we have this verse in NIV? NIV, TPT, this, that, that oath. It's not that I promise you I'll give you the charge card. It's more than that. He said, people swear by someone greater than themselves. And the oath does what? Confirm what is said and puts an end to all arguments. TPT, anyone? Any other versions? So God swore that Abraham's descendants, and ladies and gentlemen, you are the seed of Abraham. In Christ, he says, it is very common for people to swear an oath by something what? Greater than themselves. For the oath will confirm what? And end all disputes. And then in Galatians 3, verse 26, you are the seed of Abraham. Galatians 3, 26, you are, that is your new heritage. For you are all sons of God through faith in, that's the New Testament dimension. Verse 27, glory to God, 27, for as many of you as were baptized into Christ have what? Oh yes, verse 28, glory to God, there is neither Abraham or Yemi David. There is neither slave nor free, employee or employer. There is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ's, then you are Abraham's seed. And God swore to Abraham that I will do this to your seed. And God doesn't have to feel like it. He has to do it. See, God he doesn't have to like Lancy too much. He will come back to the village. So say, I'll come back. <laughs> Something forced me to come back. Because I swore. I'm going to show you a prophetic example of what an oath is. And somebody like King David that understood oath. And how that prophetic, because we have a type and shadow in the Old Testament. And you now see how these things come to play in the New Covenant. First Samuel chapter 20. Are you awake tonight? First Samuel 20 verse 14. So when you say I'm a covenant child, it's a heavy statement. Uh -huh. That song by uh, Victoria Renzi, I get back, you know. The person backing you, the person that somebody marries matters. That, that's, that's your covenant partner. So all his resources, he gave it to you. The way in Africa, the woman picks up the name, right, of the, of the husband. That's why we have the name of Jesus. The woman begins to take up the security that the man has. Okay, take this mobile policeman to go with you to that meeting. His security gave it to us, angels. Okay, in case you don't like, my spirit, me, enter you. Because you are my, you know, we are one. We are one. So we have an example of a King David that understands the oath and the covenant. And you see how it began to manifest. And you shall not only show me the kindness of the Lord while I still live, that I may not die. Hmm. Verse 2, or verse 15, sorry. But you shall not cut off your what? Somebody say Kindness. Another word for that is favor, okay? From my house forever. No, not when the Lord has cut off every one of the enemies of David from the face of the earth. This is Jonathan, the son of Saul, telling David, okay, I know I will die, but I will be king. I want you to swear. Look at the next verse. So Jonathan made what? A covenant with the house of David, saying, let the Lord, the Lord, the higher power, Require it at the hands of David's enemies. Next, next line. Now, Jonathan again caused David to. The moment that oath entered, everything changes. It's binding on David. He said, Because he loved him, for he loved him as his uh, own soul. So there was a covenant between uh, like God and Abraham's seed. So put it, put it in perspective David is like God, right? Then Jonathan is like, you know, uh, Abraham. Uh, so Jonathan is saying, David, take care of my descendants. 
my children, you must show them kindness forever. Oh my God. So 2 Samuel, I think chapter 9. 2 Samuel chapter 9. So if, if, if David, and, and when I'm praying to God, when I'm talking about covenant things, and I'm fighting war, I, I say, if David can be this committed to the covenant, how much more God? How much more? If, if David can, look at what David did. Glory to God. Are you excited again? You know. Now David said, he has become king now. Jonathan has died. But there's an oath. There's an oath. Now David said, is there still anyone who is left of the house of that I may show him what? For whose sake? Is it for the person's sake? No. God has to do some things in my life because of Jesus Christ. It's not that uh, my name is Jeremy Davis. No, my name is Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's anyone, as long as they do DNA test and they say you are Jonathan's descendant, you will not know better. Is there still anyone who is left, anyone of the house of Saul, that I may show him kindness for whose sake? Verse 2. Oh my God. And there was a servant, servant of the house of Saul, whose name was Ziba. And when they had called him to David, the king said to him, Are you Ziba? I said, At your service. <laughs> then the king said, Is there not still any, someone of the house of Saul to whom I may show kindness of God? And Ziba said to the king, There is still. A son of Jonathan. But it's lame. He has some deficiencies. Hmm. Lame. Verse 4. So the king said to him, where, where is he? And Ziba said to the king, Indeed he's in the house of Machir, son of Amiel, in Lodibar. Lo. Apparently Lodibar also means a place of scarcity and lack. Now, the reason he ran to load the bar is because in those days, when the opposition takes over the throne, the new king eliminates the generations of the, uh, uh, of the former king, especially when the former king wanted to kill the new one, like Saul wanted to kill David. So the fear was, as David had become king, anything related to that lineage would slaughter them. So he ran, lame, to load the bar, hiding there so they won't catch him. That's why he's there, verse 5. Then King David sent... And brought him out of the house of Machir. The covenant will always bring you out. Yes, sir. Wow. From the crowd in Abuja, in Lagos, yeah. in London. It will separate your business, separate your, separate your family. You are not ordinary. Yeah. There's grace on you. The Holy Ghost is on you. You can send, send. This sign is what we now receive as miracle emails. Say, I got a miracle. Yeah, because that was sent for you. Your talent must speak. Because there's something on you. Sent and brought him out of the house of Mechel, son of Amiel, from Lodiba, verse 6. Glory to God. Now, when Mephibosheth, can you pronounce it, please? Mephibosheth. Can you do it again? Hmm? Not Metito Keo. <laughs> Me what? <laughs> the son of? The son of Saul. Please take note. He's not the son of Saul. He's the son of Jonathan. Jonathan is not the only son of Saul. That covenant is with who? <laughs> Understand that. Oh, we're going to come there. My time is running. Stay on the bus. So, uh, when Mephibosheth, son of Jonathan, son of Saul, had come to David, he fell on his word and prostrated. And David said, Mephibosheth, and he answered, here is your servant. Next, next. So David said to him, do not what? Tell your neighbor, don't be afraid. You are a covenant child. God's kindness is with you. You are even a distributor of kindness. You are a fountain of living waters flowing. He said, he said, do not fear. For I will what? For whose sake? That's the finished work of Christ. Your father had finished it. I don't care your height. I don't care your name. I don't care you have one leg. What Jonathan has done for you has made you. Just tap into it. He said, for Jonathan's sake, and I will do what? Ah, all the land of Saul, your grandfather. And you shall eat bread from Lord Deba to royalty. We are king and priests. Do you understand the you are not to be in Lord Deba? Jonathan has done something. Jesus has done something. You shall eat bread at my table continually. Next verse, next verse. Then he bowed himself and said, What is your servant? That you should look upon such what? Yes. Unsaved is a dead dog. But saved is royalty. 
and David called Ziba. Have you noticed that Ziba is not a son, he's a servant? Did they give him the reward? No, he is to look for the son because the covenant is the covenant. He's still going to say, Aradago. Not Amarachi. Okay. And the, and the king called Ziba, Saul's servant, and said to him, I have given to your master son all that belongs to Saul and to all his house. Next. You therefore, <laughs> I love this verse. Just imagine the man in low Diba. Lame. I don't know what a lame man in low Diba will achieve in his life. He said, you, that's Zibao, your sons and what? Yes. Shall walk the land for him. And you shall bring in the harvest that your master's son may have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, your master's son, shall eat bread at my table. Now Ziba had how many sons? And? So can you do some calculations for me to know how many staff that Mephibosheth just got now? Calculate it very well. You, your sons, and your servants. 36. That's how this covenant prevails. In our careers, in our business, and you must walk tall. Yes, All these things because of Jonathan. Yes. It's not that Jonathan, uh, uh, um, um, uh, my people said, was serving David. Or was, mm, it was because of Jonathan. There was an oath. God swore to Abraham, I am multiplying, I will multiply your descendants, and your seed will possess the gates of their enemies. Victory is ours, prosperity is ours. You walk with that mentality. Laban could not even cheat Jacob. You have to be begging him, don't go. You are the one that carries the thing. That's how we are. And see my people. Now, this one, I studied it years ago. And it helps me to see how, if Davido can be, not Davido, Davido, <laughs> can, be, can be that committed to the covenant because he swore to Jonathan, how much more? The Almighty God. So the moment somebody is saved like this, and then the blood of Jesus covers that person, you are, you are, you are, you are saved, you are part of the covenant, all the resources of heaven moves. It changes your yeah, inheritance. It changes everything. But can you imagine Ziba now saying, no, I'm a dead dog. I'm still a dead dog. Just give me one kitchen in your palace. You know, some people do that. That's what we're doing now. Because when you are suffered in low Diba, you don't, you don't mind middle Diba. You don't mind average Diba. Don't give me high Diba, oh. You don't mind a bit higher than low. I'm telling you, that's a challenge. Yes, sir. It's like the prodigal son coming back and you're being restored. And the father says, oh, give him the best robe. Give, give, him, give him the best robe. That's the father, best robe. No, 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 no. When I was even living, I said, I'm not worthy to be called your son. I'm not your son. Just that jollof rice is okay. <laughs> I will stay with the servants. The swine I was sitting with is bad. Let me just stay in the, in the servants' quarters. That's how many of us are doing. He was to be received as a son. And I'm happy he received it. Then I saw something in 2 Samuel 21. Something happened in Israel. You now see how powerful this covenant is. 2 Samuel 21 from verse 1. Now there was a famine in the days of David. For how many years? Imagine a king, you know, the economy was bad, it was just bad, three years. Year after year. And David, what? It's very important. That's part of what the Holy Spirit helps us to do. Yes, when the thing is not aligning the way the covenant says, you don't just start binding, you know. Ask the Holy Spirit, what is it? What is it? It helps you to align. That's where I'm going to connect us to by tomorrow, that the Spirit and the covenant. Okay, now this is my inheritance. I'm now... My, my feeble shed, you know, you know I, I am blessed beyond measure. But I'm not experiencing it. That's the Holy Spirit work to now help you to align, giving you instruction, direction. But look at this. Year after year, and David inquired of the Lord, and the Lord answered, it is because of Saul and his what? Bloodthirsty house. Because he did what? First, can your mind tell you that's the problem? There was famine three years. What would you have done, Pastor? You start binding or a prayer, prayer warrior, rain, camp with It's too hot. It's too hot. Oh Lord, let that be rain. That's what you think. Go back, verse one. Go back. And David inquired. It's one area you must get. Why am I failing this exam? Instead of saying, Father, let me pass. Why am I? What is the problem? He asked, What is the problem? 
And God said, Saul did something. And that thing that even Saul did, it was because Joshua had vowed to the Gibeonites to help you see how vows are powerful. They had vowed that they would never touch the Gibeonites. Saul, out of his zeal, now killed them. And it was it backfired. God responds to oaths. That's why people join courts. It's not a small thing. When you're now in Christ, you have to break it. That's why marriage covenant is very strong. Another day. Verse 2. So the king called the Gibeonites and spoke to them. Now the Gibeonites were not of children of Israel, but the, of the remnant of the Amorites. Children of Israel had what? Saul. Protection to them. But Saul had sought to kill them in his what? Zero. For the children of Israel and Judah. Now, Wala started. Now, then David said to the Gibeonites, Look at this, oh. <laughs> what shall I do for you? And with what shall I make uh, atonement that you may allow the famine to stop? Because it looks like you are the root of the problem. Look at what they said. <laughs> and the Gibeonites said to him, we, we have no silver or gold from Saul or from his house, nor shall you kill any man in Israel for us. Oh. So he said, well, whatever you say, I will do. We are tired of this famine. Now that God has said, I need to sort you out. Look at the next verse. They answered the king. As for the man, who did what? And that we should be destroyed from remaining in any of the territories of Israel. <laughs> what happens? Let what? Let how many? Of his? Well, I don't start to... Oh. Seven men of his descendants be delivered to us, and we will hang them before the Lord. That's what they're saying anyway. In Gibeah of Saul, whom the Lord chose. And the king said, On that platform, seven descendants of Saul, men, they just died. Now look at something. It's Saul that caused the problem, not Jonathan. Look at the next verse. But the king spared Mephibosheth. The son of Jonathan. The son of... Because! You will not die this year now. They say people are dying. You will not die. You shall live. You shall prosper. You shall flourish. Because of the Lord's oath. That was what saved this lame man. Who, if not, David will hand him over. The all the seven men. I can't kill you. I swore to your father, oh. not to your grandfather or to or any other wife with children. Yes. Let's look now. <laughs> Verse 8. So the king took, I'm Judge Amani, sorry, Amoni. <laughs> and, and there is another Mephibosheth in the family, but you are not Jonathan's son. Hey. We can bear the same name, but I get back, you know. We can be here, yummy, yummy, but if you are not saved, you are not safe. Uh, we, are, we are Nigerians. I'm not just a Nigerian, I'm a covenant child. That identity supersedes my nationality. I, I, don't, I don't know where you. That, that guy's my favorite boy, too. But the, the DNA test says, hey, Jonathan, don't be your papa. So the king took Amoni and my favorite boy, the two sons of Rispa, daughter of Aya, whom she bought to Saul. And the five sons of Mihar, daughter of Saul, whom she brought up for Adriel, the son of Basilei. <laughs> Those people died. Though. But I love that verse 7. David spared. When men say there's a casting down, we will be sharing testimonies. David spared. The thing cried over Mephibosheth. When you are taking communion or you are pleading the blood, it's enforcement of this oath. Because that covenant with us is caught in blood. The blood of Jesus. So when you, when you say, I plead the blood, it's a power thing. God has to respond. Ah, okay. This person can't die like them. Can't go down like them. No, no, no. It's the seed of Abraham. It's even my son anyway. It's my daughter. Too many things crying over you. This identity helps you with enforcement. You know, a thousand may fall on your right. Ten thousand on your right. It won't touch you because you are this kind of Mephibosheth. Are you blessed tonight? Rise up on your feet. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. 
thank you, Lord. I think we should give thanks to him, isn't it? Yes. Can you imagine if the people share sees um, Jonathan's father in a vision? Daddy, a show. <laughs> thank you, Daddy. Daddy, you are the best, Daddy. Hey, Daddy, all the things you did, I'm enjoying it now. Daddy, Daddy. Your baby is singing. Ah, when you understand what he has done, lift your hands and glorify him. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, we love you. Give me a worship song. Something that fits him. Maybe neon song or something. Please give him thanks. Eh? Daddy, you rescued me before I was even born from where we were yet sinners. I was lame in low debau, but you moved me out of the merry clay and placed me on the rock to stay. Give him glory. I don't care your tribe. I don't care your gender. I don't care. Give him glory. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I can see, yeah. I can see, Ooh. and I know it's your grace. Oh my days, I will see your grace. Father, what we got? 
God the Son, I walk with God the Spirit. Lead on that joy, I get back in oh, oh, oh. I want to walk in the the story of Mephibosheth, he had a son that was living with him in low Debar. And the Holy Spirit was telling me, will the school of that child change? Yes. Woo! The school will change. His dressing will change. Will what Mephibosheth used to eat change? Will his dressing change? Will he have a driver? Will his car change? He didn't have a car. Hey! Hey! I'm on the walk alone. I'm on the walk alone. Hey, I'm on the walk alone. I'm on the walk alone. Hey, I'm on the walk alone. My daddy, my daddy, your baby is sick. Hey, I will be singing and dancing and chanting for the rest of. My daddy, my daddy, my daddy, my daddy. Your, baby your baby is singing. I will be singing and dancing. Hey, my daddy, my daddy. Your beloved is singing. I will be singing and dancing and jumping for the rest of eternity. Till the end, till the end is only you. Till the end is only you. Till the end is only you. Only you, you, you. Only you, you, you. Only you, you, you. Only you, you, you. Yes, we are like this, we are like. He who sits in heaven laughs. He who sits in heaven laughs. He who sits in heaven laughs. Those who sit in heaven laughs. Listen, I sit in heaven so I laugh. He who sits in heaven laughs. Don't you sit in the Don't you sit in the I sit in the so I love. I Hey, hey, yeah, 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 Yeshua, I'm a Shia, Lion of Judah, the one that lives in you, Akun. Yeshua, I'm a Shia, Lion of Judah, Akun of Jehovah, Akun of Jehovah. Again. Listen, never, never again in your life must you pray to be blessed. Never again must you pray for multiplication. It came in the covenant. It's inside the covenant. It's there.
you buy when when you buy a brand new car, brand new car, brand new, tear leather. No, it doesn't have to be high end Mercedes, even if it's just care. Brand new. The AC is factory fitted. If they bring the AC, if they bring the car, no AC, you reject it. The blessing and the multiplication is inside it. You don't pray for it. It's inside it. Hallelujah. You did not ask for it. They gave you. It's your birthright. The blessing is your birthright. Multiplication is your birthright. I want you to leave here tonight. Go back home. Look at every good thing in your life. And begin to look at them. And start shouting for joy. Because they are multiplying. Your business is multiplying. The money in the bank is multiplying. The members in the church are multiplying. It is in the blessing. It is in the covenant of law. Hallelujah. 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 Never again will you say bless me. What greater blessing than the blessing from the mouth of God? It's Abraham. You and all your seeds in blessing, I will bless you. In multiplying, multiply. Settled. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands and just give him praise tonight. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Put your hands together for him once again. And you may be seated. Hallelujah. Let's appreciate the servant of God. Wow. Wow. Glory to God in the highest. Father, we bless you. We give you thanks and praises. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. you have changed. You know, it's, you know, at times you need to hear again. You need to hear and hear and hear. There is no way your life will not make progress. Just be aware of this truth. And I'm so happy you're still coming back tomorrow. If there are people you love, you know, as I was saying, I can't. Because being here is not like being online. No. You can't, it's not the same. And the one that is paining me are people who are in Abuja now. In this, there are people even in the estate behind me. They are watching. Listen, just behind me here. Watch. They are here. Just walking distance. They are watching. We are now online members. And tomorrow morning, we're starting very early. The camp meeting, starting 6.30 a.m. 6.30 a.m., so be here. Go and quickly rest, 6.30 a.m., be on your way. The worship will start. We have three word sessions I'll teach. The first session, Pastor Rex will continue, then Pastor Rex will cap it up. And Yon is still with us. <laughs> and let me advise you, come early so that I can get good seating. If not, you go to the overflow. Yeah, I can't guarantee. The only person I'm reserving seat for tomorrow are pastors and our guests. Any other person, if you don't come early, any seat you find is one that you sit. If not, you'll be under the canopy of God. <laughs> let's give our offerings, please. Can I have my phone? Please, quickly, let's put together our offerings. Let's put together our offerings, our worship offerings. If you have, if you need an envelope, please, I want you to wave the ushers around you. They will give you one. There are people behind, waving behind. 
This is Thompson. Your ushers are behind waving. Ushers are waving for offering envelope. I want to appreciate all the pastors. Can I have the, the cards for the pastors? Let's quickly package our offerings. We have a lot of pastors that are fellowship with us tonight. Emekai Duma of Scriptures to the Church. Reverend Emekai Duma. God bless you, sir. Thanks for coming. We have Pastor Shun Adebanjo. Adebanjo. Kingsword International Church at Belkuta. God bless you, sir. We have Pastor Sabo Abe of Trim Kaduna. Where is he? God bless you. Right, the other pastors didn't feel that card, but we appreciate. And are there other cards that can I see more pastors but only have three cards? Well, we recognize and appreciate all of you pastors. And Noefi, Nufi, is it Nufi? Huh? Nufi. God bless you. Thank you for coming tonight. I would like to offer, let's lift up. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you accept our tithes and our offerings. Let them come back to us in things that money can buy, in things that money cannot buy. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise God. I know we've not been um, welcoming first timers um, since the conference began. And because we know that a lot of people are just camping with us. Um, um, so, but on Sunday morning, if you come on Sunday morning, even if you've been coming since Monday, you are first time officially. We're going to recognize you and welcome you because if you can be here on Sunday morning, maybe there's every chance that you are considering becoming a part of the church. But if we see you on Monday or Tuesday, you might just love the Lord and you want to partake of his word, so we'll not want to force you. But if we see you here tomorrow morning, we'll ask you to stand, we'll give you your details and want to get to know you more. Um, so it's not that we didn't know we were supposed to work on first-timers, but um, people who love the word can come for a meeting like this and not necessarily that they want to join your church. So, so we understand that. So no pressures. But if you come tomorrow morning, um, we, will, um, we will do the needful, um, give you our cards and ask you to um, fill the details and want to get to know you more. Can we allow our guests to... <laughs> let's allow our guests... Let's appreciate Pastor Amy David, Pastor Larry Rex of North Sawyer, Neon Adejo. And by the way, Neon is getting married um, next month. And, uh, we're all invited. All, all the celebrities are getting married. And they're leaving our Nigerian sisters behind. <laughs> but I have good news for the Nigerian sisters. He that will come, will come. It will not tarry. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to God. Can we have Pastor Jane close the service for us? Okay, sir. Hallelujah. I think we should end this service on the eye. Yes. Minister Dami. <laughs> we'll just do it for two minutes and then we'll say good night. They continue anytime they stop. Are we ready? Yes. We're carrying this fire, this joy. This, you know, this zeal, this anointing, this understanding of covenants. Oh, glory. Can you just lift your hands and just begin to thank him? Lord, we thank you for that which has come to us, come upon us tonight. That which has been stirred in our souls, in our spirits. Thank you because we're going with this flame. We're going with this joy. It will not be deflated in the name of Jesus. This joy is going into our homes and watering everything in our lives. Oh, Kapala Dose Kamandia. You have it too. Which of them? Please, can you just come off the stage? We'll do it together. We have about one minute to do it. Is that how you're dancing home tonight?
I hope you've had a blessed day this evening. Let's keep singing. Let's keep enforcing our victory. Hallelujah is our sound of victory. And the sound of rejoicing will fill your home. It will fill your family. It will fill your, your workplace. It will fill your business in the name of Jesus. And with that joy, you will draw from the rivers of living waters. Yes glory to god what an evening what a message what an impartation don't miss out on day seven the glory of the latter hey is greater than the former as it has built what god has in store for us tomorrow is whoosh i wish i could i wish i knew what it was i just know that it is going to be amazing so get ready get a good rest this evening and join us tomorrow 6 30 a.m west african time of course and it's going to be one stretch of a service from 6 30 to 10 30 three packed word sessions don't miss out that's all i will tell you you don't want to miss out on tomorrow please make sure that you are ready to join in on tomorrow's service get, get some good rest and don't allow anything to distract you tomorrow we have peace on himself pastor sunday we have pastor rex um on us on yeah we also have pastor yemi david and ministry we have neon adejo and we have chooks in the house so make sure that you are ready to receive from god because tomorrow is going to be explosive thank you once more for joining us for service today it's been an honor and a privilege bringing service to you online we'll see you tomorrow my name is Ngozi Otayemi and this is Holy Hill Church bringing you the awakening good night <laughs>